Um, Council were initially uh, part of the Fishway Prioritisation Programme, uh, which we were approached by Catchment uh, Solutions to be part of, which looked at waterways across the whole of SEQ uh, and started to try and figure out which one of those were the biggest barrier to fish passage and prioritise them, uh, ranking them based on things like different uh, distances from the salt water, um, where they are in the catchment. Uh, from that we had a list uh, of which this one came about I think sixth across the whole of SEQ uh, South East Queensland. Um, so then we started talking to uh, Matt about potential projects within the Ipswich area and this one was pretty high on our list, say sixth on the list overall. So we were keen to try and do something um, prior to the, the passage being built. This was a, uh, a vertical drop weir here of about 2.4 metres, so just a, a solid concrete wall. Council gets uh, a report card from Healthy Waterways every year and one of the parameters they measure is um, uh, native fish versus pest fish. We've opened up the, the, the waterway to more native fish and a lot of those native fish need to be able to go up and down to be able to breed and to spawn successfully. So hopefully we'll see an increased number in, in our native fish species. So through the project I got to speak to about three or four different community groups that are kind of fish focused or fishing focused that I didn't even know existed. So I was able to build those connections uh, with people like local stocking groups, uh, community who come out here and fish. We, it, was, uh, it got exposure on uh, forums and things like that and there was a, a groundswell of support and that followed through to that because there was people interested in it, the politicians got interested in it. Uh, we actually had the mayor down here when we finished it, paddling in this bit here, rolled his, uh, rolled his trousers up and uh, got in there and was putting fish in the, in the water, um, which is something I could have never imagined for my projects. For the cost and the time frame that this was delivered, we've got projects that are half the size that take twice as long and cost three times as much. Um, to have the guys with the know-how doing the design, the little bit of co-funding, and again, their enthusiasm and will to see it happen, we were able to deliver something at a, at a really, really good cost, great efficiency, and, uh, and yeah, something that everyone really, really is happy to, to see in place. So overall, brilliant, brilliant outcome. The head loss or the barrier height was 2.4 metres, so the fishway required 33 ridges at 80 mils to get fish up. And as you can see, it's a dog leg fishway because we couldn't quite fit it in going straight down the waterway. Uh, we monitored this fishway last year and we got some terrific results. On average we're getting 690 fish a day migrate up through the fishway that couldn't have done it otherwise. That included 21 uh, species of fish including four species that haven't been recorded in the Bremer River in 14 years of healthy waterways monitoring. Approximately 500 tonne of rock was used for this, some really really big rock as you can see between sort of six and eight tonnes, uh, anywhere up to about 2.8 metres. And the project uh, was funded by the Australian Government and Ipswich City Council and wouldn't have been possible without their great support. The fishway is extremely important for diadromous fish species, important commercial recreational indigenous fish species such as sea mullet, Australian bass, freshwater mullet and the endangered Mary River cod. Conservation stockings have occurred in this catchment to bring the population back so we're hoping that the fishway will help reconnect habitats upstream and downstream and help safeguard that uh, restricted population moving forward into the future and also facilitate the upstream migration of Australian bass which can only be good news for recreational anglers in the Bremer.